Hey everyone, hope you're all having a lovely day today. So today I'm actually really excited. We have a special guest. We have my best friend from college, Isa. Um, and we today are going to be doing kind of like a study discussion, I guess you would say, on the question, what is love? Oh, you're not wearing your sunglasses. Baby, what is love? Baby, don't hurt me. <laughs> so um, I'm actually really excited about this because I know we have a huge, broad, audience of people who are married, people who are single, people who haven't even started dating yet, people who are celibate, etc. a whole array of that stuff. So I thought it'd be a really cool idea to talk about this, um, you know, just for funsies. Um, and also because Valentine's Day was around the corner. Um, and also because love is obviously not limited to romance. There's so many different kinds of love. There's love for your friends, your family, your parents, God, etc. cetera. Um, and this actually, you know, was on my mind because my best friend Isa, who's here, um, had actually done a study about love um, a few months back. And I remember she was talking to me about it and I found it so interesting. And I was like, oh my gosh, that's something that I think like everyone on YouTube should be hearing because it was really awesome to study. Um, so I guess Issa, my first question before we go into, you know, the actual discussion would be why do a study on love? Like what gave you the idea for that? Like, you know, cause it's such a broad, you know, word that we use all the time. You know, I feel like in every day we'll be like, oh, I love this. I love this person. I love that. Um, so what gave you the idea to do that? So, okay. I, you're totally right. And I think that that was coming into my head was the idea that like, I don't know, like when I was talking about it with my friend, I was kind of thinking like, oh, that, that is like, I don't know, like we kind of throw it around and I don't know if like anyone knows what the Bible project is. And if you don't, you should, <laughs> um, <laughs> but they do these really amazing word studies that are super short and like, they're easy to understand. And there was this one, I think it was, I think it was focusing on the, one of the Greek words for love and um Tim Mackey who who narrates it he goes we say I love my mom but I also say I love pizza <laughs> and if we equate the love true. that we have for pizza to my mom my mom would be pretty upset <laughs> so which is like totally true and I like it doesn't really require any more explanation as to why but like like think meta for a second and say like why like why does that upset us and like you kind of reach this answer of like well because like you kind of automatically know that there are like different types like there are different levels mm -hmm. there are different types um and so basically like I think that was kind of like knowledge in my head already and I had seen it and I had like witnessed it for myself just like being on earth for more than like 10 seconds <laughs> and, <laughs> um and like being in community with people for more than 10 seconds <laughs> But where it really sprang out of was like, um, I love to think really deeply about everything, but like, this is just not a topic that I had ever really thought about. And I was talking on the phone with a friend of mine and like, at some point in this conversation, there came up this, I don't even know like how, but like the concept of love is a choice came up. And I was like, yeah, you're right. Wait a second. Is it? <laughs> But like we were in the middle of like it was a longer conversation like we moved on to something else like almost immediately after that we hardly spent any time on it so because my mind had moved on um to like the next thing we were talking about it didn't really like it didn't really take too much root mm -hmm. until later it kind of came back in, in my head and I was like hold up this is so like I'm feeling like a like not cognitive dissonance, but like I don't know. Like I don't actually know if that's the case. And I love to like ask myself questions. Like I I call it like an art form of question asking without, you know, interrogating. And I'm like, okay, why? Like, do I feel like that's not the case? Like, what is my experience? What is my knowledge? What is my understanding that like makes that not the case? And so I'm basically thinking and I'm realizing that like there are areas of my life in which I love people and I don't feel like I choose that. Like I did not wake up and choose to love my brother. That's like kind of a very niche TikTok record. I, <laughs> like I didn't wake up and choose to love my mom because like I already like that came like built in and yeah. I didn't wake up and choose to love my siblings. Um, even though like I didn't choose to have siblings, but I like that came, you know, and I can expect, I don't have children, but like I, I want children and I can kind of expect based on what I've heard from people and like have, you know, read in multiple instances that that's also gonna come built in. Like, I don't know if yeah. you've ever heard mothers talk about how like I, 
like, I love my husband and like, I love my parents and my siblings, but like, I never knew how much I could love someone until I had my baby. Like, yeah. I don't know if you've ever heard that before. Um, but like, I don't think I've, I honestly don't think I've heard like of a mother who doesn't say that. Mm-hmm. So I'm like thinking about all these different types and catching the fact that like, okay, my love for my mom is very different than my love for my brother. And it's very different than even for like my dad, I love my parents in two different ways, Mm -hmm. but it's, it's different than my love for my husband will eventually be. And different from my love for my friends and my, Mm -hmm. like my children eventually will be. And also different from the love for my neighbor who like, you know, just as in like just people, you know, um, and so I'm just kind of like pondering this and like, holy crap, like this is a lot more, I guess, not well thought out than I thought. Like for as much of, for as much as the human population talks about love, we actually have not, like, these were all questions that I yeah, never, no, like, exactly. I never, yeah, like I had never like pondered before. And I was like, what in the world? And, and I, I even talked to, I still have yet to hear back from him because he's a busy like seminary professor but like I even took this to a seminary professor who was at a conference I was at and he was like I never thought about that (laughs) (laughs) and so he was like helping me with with like old testament references but but that's basically the background and then because past that it starts to get really specific and you know I, I made this big effort to like go and look at like well duh like what does the bible say like it can't just be based on my experience because yeah. I'm not the only you know I'm not I'm a unique experience to like Jack like to your experience to all the viewers experience you know to to my sibling my family's experience so what I can go to that's concrete is the word and so that's like I guess like the yeah the general absolutely There's 38 pages of like read of writing that I've done for this yeah no I was gonna say I remember looking at your uh when you shared the document with me I remember being like there is 38 pages on here (laughs) like yeah and I was gonna say like actually just as kind of like a lead-in where did you like how did you start that research and that study like I know you obviously went like you know you're saying going to God's word because that's obviously our source of truth for everything um Mm -hmm. but I was gonna say like what other sources did you seek out like you know I know you said earlier like when we were talking you said you did a little bit of like you know studying like you know the root words of like certain Hebrew words and Greek words and stuff like that like I was gonna say like where did some of your uh like I guess once you had all these questions in your head like where did you kind of go with your research I'm actually low-key now I'm like forgetting (laughs) not not forgetting but like (laughs) that always happens I remember immediately when I thought about like just the first day that I was thinking about this, I'm mm-hmm. like, nobody was home. And I was like, I don't know if anyone else is like this, but when nobody's home, I like think out loud because I don't like have a voice. Oh, in yeah. my head. I think out loud and I like Ted talk to myself and I become yes. like, I love doing I that like Aristotle and like, just like <laughs> philosopher just mode on. And I like have these revelations and I'm thinking out loud. And like, immediately I think of the book, um, the four loves, by C.S. Lewis, and so I never I, heard I, of that. I, I need to read it. Yeah, yeah, and so it totally read it. Um, he's he's such like a run on sentence guy, but like he makes oh, things very that. accessible. He's so smart, but like he makes things accessible for people who don't have an Oxford education, like me. Yeah, so, <laughs> I would say like me too. Um, <laughs> yeah, right. And um, so I and I know my mom had an old copy of that lying around um the house so I I went and I and I found that and I kind of started reading but I found it interesting because kind of like in a continued conversation with my friend um from before I was like thinking about the words I guess used um and I was like I think what we had found was that the bible actually only uses two of them and I was like wait a second that's so interesting because even in popular culture you hear a lot about like I'm sure you've heard the word like eros thrown around which is like yeah. passionate like romantic and like sexual love um and then if agape was heard, another one or something that's another one but I was gonna say people have probably heard the prefix like um p-h-i-l p-h-i-l-i-a like philia like you philia can, like, yeah like um eighth grade history class will teach like philadelphia the city name is the city of brotherly love like Mm, um, mm -hmm. the you know adelphi 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 means brother but then the prefix phil refers to love the brotherly love so that um the root word is is phileo 
I'm yeah. probably getting a lot of this wrong. This is all like one-on-one, -on -one, like just me doing my own research. But mm -hmm. as far as I'm concerned, the root word is phileo and it means that's a flavor of love. Eros is also a flavor of love. So is agape, which I think the pure like root form is, is agapao. Um, and then there's also this other word, storge, which like I, people don't throw around. And yeah, I've never heard I that. <laughs> was about and I wanted to see, I was so upset. I wanted to see the Bible's usage of it. It's not in the Bible anywhere. <laughs> there's, there's uh, in one of the Timothys, in one of the letters to Timothy, there's, there's like, Astorge, Astorge, I'm still learning my Greek pronunciation, Astorge, which is like the absence of it. Um, but oh. C.S. Lewis and his, um, but it's only used like twice. And I think yeah. it's only within that letter to Timothy. And so what C.S. Lewis does is he like examines all four. And I haven't finished mm -hmm. the book yet, but he examines all four. Um, and so it's like he, he defines them all, but I actually put that book aside because I was like, he goes into the two loves that aren't really explored in the Bible and the Bible explores agape the most by far. Mm -hmm. um, and then behind that, it explores um, philia, which in like an ultra general sense, I feel like people out there who might be like pastors or like teachers or like in seminary, they're going to be like, don't listen to her. <laughs> She's got it all wrong. But so anyone who like just knows the way to go, correct me. <laughs> but as far as I'm concerned, like the general kind of like elementary school way of looking at those two is like agape is, um, you, is used primarily to speak of like God's love to just insert name here, anybody. Um, and then like for the world like the love that's used in john 3 16 is that verb um mm. and a lot of people nowadays will call it like selfless love like unconditional love yeah unconditional um, love as i know used yes, a lot yeah, exactly and then um philia is the one that often i think in the bible it's mostly used to refer to fellowship friendship um but it's almost like brotherly love <laughs> exactly exactly and so but this is where it gets like weird because the like western idea of love kind of starts to corrupt the two um mm -hmm. and so it's like when I, I feel like if you ask like a pastor or, or like someone who studies like the hebrew text um if you ask them like how do i study the bible like as true to its um, translation as possible. And this is why like KGV only people make me laugh because I'm like, if you want to be true to, maybe this is like too spicy to say on Christian comma, <laughs> but like, it makes me laugh because I'm like, if you really want to be true to the translation, learn Hebrew and Greek. <laughs> but um, if you ask like a pastor, someone who studies the word, they'll be like, well, you have to learn how to read it through the eyes of like the Old Testament Israelites or through mm. the eyes of like the New Testament um Jews or like the Greeks you know in the in the letters and um like learn how to read it from the angle the eyes of the people that these letters were being written to or like the you know the people that Jesus was was living with yeah um and so in order to do that you kind of it's like hard you know to do it without learning the whole language and time traveling because nobody speaks Koine Greek fluently anymore <laughs> nobody speaks biblical Hebrew anymore there's only Hebrew like modern day Hebrew speakers and even that's a little bit different so it's like um, when I really went into it, I realized that like even our understanding of agape, because it is still a word in use today, I believe. I don't know any modern Greek speakers correct me. I'm pretty sure it's still in use. <laughs> um, I there we would never define it as having an act of the will, but like when you go and you look at it in the word, almost every single time there's like this clear undertone of like there's like a will in like mm -hmm. in my heart I've got like this will that's like pushing me to do this like this act of love I'm doing it because I'm like I have it in my will yeah and that's not always the case with um philia and like especially in Christian circles a lot of times like when when you get into like the territory of like eros and like lust um and like passionate love um you start to hear like oh well those are the relationships that fall apart because like if they were based just on like the sexual aspect you know like there was no time to develop yeah. that like agape there was no time to develop that selfless like will you only last for love. so long <laughs>
exactly and so that's like it was crazy to me to like go and think or see I'm like oh okay like I've been hearing people talk that way for my entire life now that I'm noticing like how the like the deeper you go like that's why people speak against like I mean the word says don't do it <laughs> but like another reason why we psychologically speak against like you know basing our relationships off of like attraction like that mm -hmm. is because when we do that it like and we don't give it the time to develop like that willing selfless love that unconditional love that's when it you know it starts to fall apart because there isn't that aspect of the will mm -hmm. um and that like moral I guess moral compass maybe that's not the right term but I don't know the elementary definition of like philia is like you know the the love like you feel that emotion and like you you want to act on it like you want to go be with these people it's usually for your friends it's used to describe the love between husband and wife it's used to um to describe i think i think just families in general i think um and then agape is it's like all of those aspects but like add this unconditional like give of myself like willingness yeah. and like sacrifice kind of so like you you would use agape to uh, like describe friends sometimes mm -hmm. but you would also use it to describe like husband and wife whereas like yeah. they're not always interchangeable so it's very like there's just so much it's like so hard to like I know like condense it I know like it's just yeah. it's that it's so, so hard to put everything into yeah. one tiny little box because it's not a tiny little box it's like multiple compartments it almost seems like you know yeah. um you know like you just it's like a, a walk-in closet, you know, like the closet. <laughs> that sounds so tough. The closet <laughs> inside the closet is like, exactly here's all, this pair of shoes. This this pair of shoes is that. Over here we have a flannel that is this, you know. Yeah. Um, but it's no, all it's in the true. closet it's, of love. Yeah, it's one big thing with like a million um, different, like not even levels, but yeah, I like that compartments. It's like you open the door yeah. and mountain of shoes here are all my sweaters my closet doesn't even look like that no I was gonna say mine either I was like that's a I know that those exist like when you see sometimes on like crazy big like you know uh huge like mansions and like you know million dollar <laughs> homes they'll have these like huge walk-in closet and they're like these are my shoes and these are my this and I'm like oh it's kind of like that <laughs> not that I know what that is but <laughs> <laughs> yeah but um no yeah no that's like I I think that's amazing to like you know put it that way I know that um before when we were talking you were saying something along the lines of love being an action a choice and an emotion like those three I remember we had touched on um and I was wondering if you wanted to kind of like just that idea as a whole maybe go into a little bit yeah okay so that's like that's perfect that's kind of like oh well what's the new definition <laughs> Yeah, what is, wait, I need my glasses. Literally not, yeah. So that's not a disclaimer I want to say is that like, I really wanted this to be, I didn't want this to be like really academic research. Like I wanted mm. this to be on my own time. Like I wanted this to be like led by the Holy Spirit. So yeah. like, you know, we keep saying like, oh, it's a study, like it's research. Like what? It's I a discussion. Think? There's 38 pages. Yeah. Like, the 38 pages are there because like I knew I needed to make a, a Google lock because like I knew that God was about to be like let me bless you with some wisdom <laughs> or maybe not even wisdom just like some knowledge and so yeah it was really cool it was like he he my relationship with God changed from this um really but in what yeah. way what'd you say oh just because like the ultimate question at the end of the day it's like once you answer what is love it's like okay now how do I use this wisdom in my mm -hmm. walk as a Christian like how because like man is it first john 4 it's like first john 4 18 or 4 8 i think maybe is the verse that says like god it's just the verse that says god is love oh my god i'm like not on my game with the reference today i haven't said that one in a while but i'll look it up but that one is the one where you know we find in the old testament that god has all these names um like i don't know if you've ever heard like god like i mean he's like the protector he's our redeemer like he's things mm -hmm. like jehovah jireh like all those things mm -hmm. um but like technically really the ultimate name for god is like love like with the capital L. yeah he, you know he says he is love so really to know what love is to know is to know what god is is to know god exactly. exactly yeah and so we we also know from many other passages that like we'll we'll never understand god like we'll never we we'll never really we die like not understanding ourselves in a way that's like so deep but like i know yeah i was gonna say ooh. yeah you'll hear like ma old married couples say like oh i'm i'm still learning about my spouse like i'm still learning about my kids even though i've you know had them for like 45 years 
Um, and so like, if we can't even know ourselves, like we're never, we're never going to, yeah. you know, unpack God exactly. all the way. So <laughs> that's like, I went into it knowing that I'm never going to unpack love all the way either. Um, but I guess like what I feel like God allowed me to the point <laughs> that he did was like, um, I said on November 15th that I felt, and I still agree with it. I haven't like broken it down any further yeah. that love is like an internal state. And that's, what's probably going to need a lot of breaking down. Yeah. <laughs> love is like an internal state or perhaps like continual constant experience mm -hmm. that fosters various emotions it compels or drives one to specific actions and is sometimes or is oftentimes the force behind the selfless will um which i already kind of like touched on so it's like yeah it's like i've been looking at it as like a little root planted in your spirit and i'm not i'm not gonna say heart or mind because that's a whole another hebrew argument mm -hmm. <laughs> which i also learned on this but it's like a little love is like a little root planted in your spirit um in you i guess if you don't want to use the, the word spirit um and then it has like these three leaves that come out of it like yeah. these three big branches and then you know they grow leaves from there so it's like a nice big old pennsylvania evergreen tree there. well i guess evergreens are only they're only green but like it's a nice big tree and like one part of it in the fall like it's it's the fall one part of it's red so over here it's still green and over here it's mm. like yellow so I like, like that analogy. Yeah, so I also love those trees. <laughs> you know, so <laughs> I kind of realized, and I remember I was actually, I chose, it was between Acts and Ephesians. I really wanted to like do another close study because I had done Romans over the summer mm -hmm. and I wanted to do another New Testament book because I had been spending so much time in the Old Testament. <laughs> Me too. I know it's been like, I, I literally, I think we were just talking about that. We've been doing so much in the Old Testament. Yeah. It's the, literally, it's the one thing that I feel like I do well is like actually spend time in the Old Testament um, because nobody likes to do it, but um, I was spending a lot of time. So I, I wanted to pick another New Testament thing and I ended up going with Acts actually just because I couldn't decide and so I was yeah, like I'm like I haven't done a lot with Acts either choose Acts for Ephesians <laughs> and literally Acts won out by one vote and so I was like okay Acts it is and I was reading Pentecost I was at Acts chapter two and I was reading about Pentecost okay. and I noticed that the language that and I use ESV but I was like just because I was on fire about these these the biblical languages and so I was like I was I can't recommend it enough. I have to like gas up Blue Letter Bible. It's totally free. Oh. So like, translations, you can look at the Is that an app? On. Yeah, or it's, no, it's a website. Like it's a free website. They've got like teachings on it. Have I like gone to this? I'm going to like write yeah, that down. <laughs> linear is it's like you can bring up a passage and like look at the translation so it's got like the septuagint like the hebrew like the the greek the original greeks for like for the new testament so look it up i have the app yeah i'm like doing that right now i'm like on I, I feel like i might have gone to this before really yeah. quick one second um the bible yeah but like for oh, no well now i know <laughs> like if you're looking to like up your I guess like your bible study like the two best like three resources I can seriously think of are like I already mentioned the bible project and um like their whole website they've got youtube blogs all that um and then the blue letter bible yeah so it's really free but so I've been you know I was blah 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 reading acts using the blue letter bible for my greek accompaniment and i'm like reading about pentecost and just like the language and like the imagery of like i mean the you know the tongues of fire um and the whole point of pentecost was like the the first like entrance of the holy spirit like into people's hearts because like by yeah. then jesus he had he had died he resurrected and um he descended because that's the first chapter of acts is the ascension mm. uh, and then the second is like his return to earth like in the sense of like okay now i'm gonna you know now i'm truly with you like within your heart so you know that's when we were really made vessels and i was like hold up <laughs> hold up and i found that pentecost really really like solidify that definition that i had in my my mind of like a tree which if you, you go into the old testament you'll notice that god is constantly using trees the tree of life like yeah to symbolize like health growth like just the spirit in general like he's always using trees um to teach and so i was like 
Pentecost didn't use any trees, <laughs> but like, I was like, hold on in Acts two, you have the, you have Pentecost, you've got people without the spirit. And then God kind of comes down and like, he uses, he comes down, he comes into the world again, like in the form of the Holy spirit. And he kind of like completes this like image of the Trinity in the sense mm -hmm. that like, you know, we've seen God all throughout the old Testament. Jesus has come to fulfill these prophecies. Um, he's died, resurrected, and now he's within us all as the Holy spirit. So that's mm -hmm. when you see, you know, the tongues of fire, you might already know this, blah, blah, blah. I know Jack already knows this. Um, but like, there's this image, these, this language of like entering into our hearts, like mm -hmm. being like part of us, like within us um, and kind of like, you know, beginning this renewal process. Yeah. And so like when and you I think, th oh, sorry. No, please keep going. I no, I was going to say like, just really quick thought. When you said love being in an internal state, I feel like that almost paints that picture of it being literally an internal state, but exactly. keep going. Exactly, <laughs> literally, exactly. And I was, shook when I thought about this and I was like dang that one Instagram vote I don't know who you were but like you bless me I, <laughs> so I'm so mad I couldn't vote I don't have Instagram I need to like <laughs> yeah right it's time to start a CC Christian combos <laughs> go, go blow them up <laughs> um but, but anyway so I'm like I couldn't even believe this it's got like this you know this I'm not even like a visual learner I'm like an auditory learner all you teachers mm -hmm. learn. um but so it's like this acts this image of like here these people yeah suddenly now you know here's the spirit they've gone like he's gone into these people's hearts i think i can't remember if he used the word heart but that's again a whole other thing um mm. but sorry my phone's dinging no i was gonna say who's like now blowing you up right now <laughs> <laughs> what's going on um but i'm like trying to get the words so you gotta ask people holy spirit is in their hearts now and then if the holy spirit God, Jesus, all the same thing, Trinitarian, amen. Um, and I'm getting emails, what the heck? If he <laughs> is love, if God is love, okay, Trinity, Jesus is also love. Okay, Trinity, again, the Holy Spirit is also love. Pentecost is the Holy Spirit coming into your heart. So by the transitive property of math, literally, love has just then entered into all of those early church believers' hearts. And that's such, and I never would have thought of it that way, but that is so, like, it, you know, that makes sense. Yeah, right? you know. I thought it was insane. And so, yeah. And so I was like, you know, he, it's, I guess you could call it a stretch just because he didn't use the language. The word and the language. Yeah. Yeah. Right. He didn't use love. He didn't use the, but like, seriously, that's why we're always supposed to be in the word because yeah. like, you know, we're going to find like, oh, well, God spoke of himself here as love, mm -hmm. which, you know, like I literally said, the Trinity property of math, but the Trinity property of math while wow, I was like mm -hmm. a dad joke I was like a granddad joke um then you know if God is love then he's also when yeah. the Holy Spirit enters in our hearts um to make us a new creation love also enters in our hearts to make us a new creation and so then it's like so yeah love is really not I don't know if anyone like listening has ever thought like this love is like almost not of myself like I know mm. I've experienced before like sometimes I've been like really mad with someone like I know we'd probably instantly think of like parents like no matter what your relationship is with your or your siblings like no literally no matter what your relationship is with your parents and your siblings good or bad like you've probably felt pretty mad at them or angry at them before but like there probably have been instances in which like you do the work to forgive or like I'm like man I'm pissed off but like I really I feel like to kind of turn the other cheek, I'll like go do the dishes or like, I will mm. fix this for you or like, I'll blah, blah, blah. Or like, if you, like, I, um, walk the dog. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, and sometimes like, it doesn't have to be like, oh, I'm mad, but I'll do this anyway. Like, yeah. I think that, like it's snowing like crazy, like up here, like you could go visit your grandparents or your parents or your sibling who's moved out now and like wipe off their car like mm -hmm. blah, blah 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 you can even do it for the neighbors just because right mm -hmm. so it's like this love I guess like you can think like especially you might even notice it better if you didn't grow up Christian but then we're saved and like you've kind of seen that change like in a yeah. way you wouldn't notice you know when you have it in your heart since being five years old <laughs> you might notice that like oh this isn't something that I would have done when I was like 20 but like yeah. now I'm 30 and like I've been in the spirit for so long uh like I can see like it's almost not of me like but now mm -hmm. 
and into my heart like I willingly like want to do this like I want to go shovel my neighbor's shower like I want to forgive my my parent or my friend um it's like grace almost you know yes that's literally exactly I can't believe I haven't even said that word (laughs) (laughs) like this whole totally like new thing that's like it was a part for me but now it has been a part for uh, it Mm -hmm. now it is a part of me and so it's like I just keep going back to that like it's it's a root like God has kind of Mm -hmm. as the Holy Spirit like when I accepted Jesus into my heart as my Savior Jesus okay like I accepted love into my heart like truly as my Savior and then therefore now it's like I you know this is the inner reformer coming out but like I'm (laughs) I know it's like such a meme now and like around the internet but it's like I like Calvinists they're always talking about how like oh I'm broken I'm simple and it's true it's true like the bible says um like as sinful and like as broken as I am I can't love naturally the way that God asks me to and so like when I step back and I look at it from this angle like I see how he's like this separate you know, he, God is separate and he's come in and like, now I can do these things even mm-hmm. though I stuff all the time. I can do <laughs> because, you know, he has made himself, you know, not one because that's when we're in heaven, but like he, you know, he's joined he's here. He's with us. Exactly. God has joined himself to me, like within my heart and it's all now, now you can see the tree. Now you can see the leaves growing from my, my branches. So No, that's awesome. I think that's incredible. And, um, you know, I think that I almost like don't know how to like top that off because that was just so much and it was all so amazing. And, you know, when you were using, I know I rambled for so long, please talk because I feel bad. (laughs) Oh my gosh. No, like this is what it's, we're here to have a discussion. Um, I think that's really cool when you use that one thing that, and this doesn't really have to do with our topic specifically for today, but I know that when you talked about, um, using, uh, you know, that's why we spend so much, why we should spend so much time in the word, because every time you open your Bible, you see something new. And when you were specifically using that, I think you called it, um, what principle of math was it? <laughs> I'm pretty, maybe I'm getting it wrong, but the transitive property of math. <laughs> transitive property of math. I don't know, something about logic, but it's almost like a form <laughs> of true. logic, I guess you could say. And I remember thinking that like, you know, when you said, oh, that might be a bit of a stretch. And I was like, yes, but no, not really. Cause I remember Jesus even used logic. It, like I remember when uh he said something along the lines of like how can Satan cast out Satan or something like that I was like yeah, oh my gosh like right that is yeah I didn't even think of that you it's, know like yeah I've had conversations with my parents and a few of my friends about how like um I don't know if you've ever heard like I I've talked to you about it but for the sake of whoever's watching like um we kind of like there's this modern day thought process of like oh are you a head thinker or like a heart thinker oh my gosh (laughs) and it's like when you're really far in like one direction or the other it's like you tend to kind of like throw the other one out and it's like well if you're like if I'm a heart thinker then all y'all head thinkers are like too legalistic and like the Holy Spirit, like he's not in your brain, he's in your heart. <laughs> like if you're a head thinker, then you're like, oh, like Jeremiah 17, 9, like your heart's deceitful, wicked, and like the Holy Spirit. But like, I've talked and thought so much about this, but like, okay, first of all, this is a crazy thing. And like totally topic for another video, would love to come back for it. But yes, actually, oh my gosh, no, yeah. Multiple, but the one most used Hebrew word is actually the same exact word for heart and for mind. And it is the one used in Jeremiah 17, 9, which a lot of people take out of context, not take out of context, but they they kind of like misuse it a little bit, I think. Mm-hmm. Can't speak from any authority, but <laughs> the word is for everyone. <laughs> so <laughs> I woke up with a little sass today, I guess. <laughs> oh my gosh, no, I love it. I'm like, I'm here for it. <laughs> yeah, right. And so I've realized that like, okay, God has created our mind. He has created like, wisdom knowledge like ration like rationale like reason reason is the right word to encompass all of it um but he also created our emotions he made them he made us to be feeling people um experiential people so yeah it's like um it's it's so interesting to see or for you to like make that because I hadn't even thought about like it's (laughs) like love is love is logical love is reasonable it's it is it's actually first Corinthians first or first Corinthians 13 8 something around that you know it's like the the love is passage it says open to reason and Mm -hmm. open to reason I mean it it means like open to you know being wrong and and right but it's like reason you know reasoning with with other people so yeah love is love is logical (laughs) I like that um no I think that's awesome and actually uh 
I think today we are a little bit out of time. We actually ended up talking about something that I wasn't even planning on talking about because I originally was today thinking, you know, we're going to talk about it. The action, the uh, love is a choice and love is a feeling. Um, but I actually really like where we went today, which is just kind of figuring out, you know, where love comes from and like, you know, talking about that. Um, but what I did want to... I feel like you kind of need to. That's like the prerequisite. Really. Prereq. This that's is this is 100. This isn't even 101 yet. Yeah. This is the 101 for the 201. So, I mean, yeah, it's like you need to know where it comes from before you really go into it. So, mm -hmm. I'm like mad for like going the wrong way. It's the teacher. Oh my gosh, but I'm no. I'm mad going the wrong way, but I'm glad that it was like secretly the right way, you know? Oh, yeah. No, of course. I was going to say, I was like, I don't think we went the wrong way at all. I think that was actually amazing. <laughs> um, but what I would like to say is uh, if you guys are interested in seeing more of these, which I hope you guys are, because there's so, so much we didn't go over. Like I said, 38 pages, y'all. Um, <laughs> the outline? What? Should I give them like a preview of the outline? Oh, yeah. Hold on. Yeah, let me do that, actually. Let me I... just Oh, share. you're going to do the screen share. <laughs> screen reading right here. Sure. Look at this. Um, wait, where's the, where's my... <laughs> Oh, I need to move now, this. I on the side, but if you scroll all the way up to the top, there's, yeah. um, yeah, I've been calling it my semi-organized test casual research. <laughs> so yeah, if, if you want me to just like run through it, I don't know, like the other ideas that I really went into is like, there's that big question of like, what is love? And we did that. And there's yeah. these smaller questions. I went through the definition and I really expanded on the background. Um, but then I did all this like word studying. So there was like the New Testament, there's the Old Testament words because they're totally different. Um, and then the thing that I find is the most interesting is like their love is a many faced thing. And there's all these different mm -hmm. pieces, which is like the love that you feel within familial relationships. Um, and then love that you feel between friends, the Christian to thy neighbor. And then the love, of course, to end all loves, which is God to his children and us as his children too. Amen. <laughs> God. so and then there's some specific topics like I want to look um I feel like I can't can't really end this like research reading praying until I hear from the LGBTQ community um and also kids because kids just have such a different relationship or such such a unique like way of of looking at things and when I say yeah. kids I mean like we have like under 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 18 but like kids so kids and teens really kids yeah kids and like it's under like 14 and then like mm -hmm. teen like 13 through three because i was gonna say because you've seen a lot of that doing like youth ministry like girls get okay, girls guys and <laughs> she's like the queen bee of youth ministry she's like always doing i remember when we were in college together she was always going doing stuff whatever oh, yeah, with everybody like, are you sure you need to be in this thing too and i'm like yes, it was, <laughs> yes. <laughs> no like everything like that and also being a teacher you know um yeah, you know, it's definitely a lot of interactions. So you've probably seen a lot um, just in that, you know, uh, from that, uh, I don't even want to say community, age group, mm -hmm. you know, age group. Um, cause the more, the more I like go through life, the more I am fascinated by and enjoying the, like seeing how God factors into human development. I just think human development. Human development. Oh yeah. No, I loved when I was in college, I took, you know, um, I literally took a class what HDFS HDFS no I didn't even take HDFS I took um but I took cognition which is you know oh, the study okay. of the actual brain and I also took um uh developmental psychology and that I loved I loved learning about um I mean that's a completely completely different topic but developmental psychology was absolutely amazing I loved just learning how the brain develops how like you know people develop different thought processes and different, um, you know, figuring out why mm -hmm. certain people get along with each other and others don't. Like, I just, I, I found that to be really fascinating. Cognitive science, yeah, it's a crazy thing. And sir, literally, I don't know how you want to do this, but like, drop me a stinking line if you are also fascinated by metacognition, which is thinking about thinking. Oh, oh, <laughs> oh, absolutely. <laughs> metacognition in like cahoots with human development is like, yeah, when you were talking about thinking out loud, I was like, that's me all the time. That's me. I literally, it's so bad. Or um, thinking about thinking, like asking yourself those questions. Like I'm always, I'm always talking metacognition. And I like, I love when I ask people questions, I love getting them to do the metacognition. Also, like, thinking. Oh, I'm I'm seeing the visual thought process, like, yeah. 
but yeah no so we would definitely love to do more of these i actually like i'm so glad we did this today um let me know if you want to see more of this because i think this would be a really cool new like kind of series i guess to embark on you know not like you know discussing you know what is love just do this study as a whole um because there's so much we didn't get to go over and there's so much more to talk about um you know not just like i liked what you said before about it not really being a study but rather a discussion i think that's real well, it's kind of both you know um it's yeah, no. like through god it's just like a different angle you know Absolutely. looking at god so yeah, yeah. i like seriously i'm so interested to see what more and more people have to say so like whoever is like also interested in this stuff like write up write up your own 38 pages and drop it in the comments <laughs> yeah no totally let us know what your thoughts are in the comments below yeah. um and just a really quick before we close, thank you so much, Issa, for being here today. Um, hopefully this is not the last time that we do this. I would love to see more. Of, like, I genuinely can't fathom how much I enjoy doing this um, because, <laughs> like, you know, we, like, just for you guys, you know, we, when we talk, the two of us, we have, like, just hour-long discussions. And I'm so happy that we got to, like, finally bring one of those to light. Um, I know it was you doing most of the talking, but that's what I wanted because this is your, you know, study and research and I just find it so fascinating. I'm I loving listening. You're going to make fun yeah, of me now. Okay. Well, you it's already like do Jack, enough. Jack, Jack normally talks more than he did. It's not, I know, but I was going to crack a joke, but I'm like, no, you don't talk more than I do. It's like, it depends on the day. It's like, it depends on the day. It's like me listening to Jack and my days for Jack's listening to me. No, there are plenty of times where I'll just call and just talk for in like an hour and a half and he's just sitting there like, mm -hmm, yeah. <laughs> I took notes the other day. It's still on my I literally had her take. I was like, she wrote down on a post it. She was like, I just wanted to let you finish. No, you didn't tell me. I did. Because no, I yeah, that's what I'm saying. Sorry. I did that. I did that with somebody else recently. You can't tell like the level at which our friendship is you, you do now. So I don't know if you recognize me from the Virginia vlog. I was going to, I was literally going to say like, you might recognize probably, her from the Virginia the most, vlog. I was probably what, who all of you thought was the most annoying friend. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> so, yeah. But anyway, thank you so much for being here hopefully this is this is this will not be the last time this will not be the last time that she is here don't worry we will definitely have more of these um if you're up for it um but yeah no hope you guys have a lovely yeah, rest of your what oh, the <laughs> oh you can see me in there yeah oh welcome back to christian combos that's me and that's jack <laughs> wait oh crap i can't have... your vibe. <laughs> oh no i have my what is love glasses on no what is love baby i wanted to play that so badly but i didn't know if i'd get copyrighted but anyway i will see you guys very soon hope you all have a lovely rest of your day and as always god bless god bless <laughs>